Anytime I go on a big adventure, I wanna make sure that I have the best camera for the job. So I was going on a short trip to the Bahamas and I wanted to make sure that I had the right tool for exactly one hour of snorkeling. Yeah, it's not me. I'm not the one who has gear acquisition syndrome. It's you. Shut up, you're enabling me. Anyway, it didn't take much research at all to lead me to the Nikonos V, which is one of the best cameras of all time for shooting in extreme conditions. Extreme luck swimming with sharks. I bought one of these beauties used on eBay for about $400. You can see mine is in really good condition and it came with the 35 millimeter kit lens. So the only thing left for me to do is load the camera up with some ectochrome and take it to the Bahamas. And before you guys type your sweet little comments, I pronounce Nikon like an American because I'm an American. Pronouncing it any other way would be weird. I don't give you guys shit for how you pronounce aluminum. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the Nikonos. It actually surprised me that the camera wasn't entirely the product of Nikon's own engineering. The Nikonos system began life in 1959 as the Calypso Photo, a camera co-developed by the French ocean explorer Jacques Cousteau and Belgian inventor John de Wouters. And the camera was produced by Atmos. In 1962, Nikon acquired the sole production and distribution rights to the Calypso camera, bringing it under their umbrella. And that's when Nikon decided to change the name to the Greek god version of Nikon, which was Nikon. Now I'm just making all that up. Looking at the camera, it actually has more in common with Nicki Minaj than you think. First of all, it's thick. Number two, it comes dressed in bright colors. And anybody who's ever used one of these cameras is quick to tout it as the perfect all-weather camera. If you want a camera that you could shoot in the rain or shoot in the water or shoot in the snow or shoot in a volcano, the Nikonos V is the definitive choice. I mean, just take a look at the camera and the sound it makes when I set it down on the desk. I mean, it's a chunky old dude. But even despite it being so chunky, it's still very compact. It hardly takes up the entire palm of my hand. It's not pocketable by any stretch. It's not a compact camera, but for the capabilities they're getting with the camera, it's actually relatively compact. It's got all rounded corners. The knobs and buttons are all big and chunky. And the camera also has really nice build quality. You can feel that it's an all metal chassis. Uh, feels very good in the hand. From 1962 to 2001, Nikon produced a variety of Nikonos cameras of varying sophistication and technological advancement as the years went on. And the number one goal with the design of these cameras, each iteration was that these cameras would remain usable underwater. And that's why we have that chunky build quality is so it can withstand the pressure that's experienced at greater depths underwater. It actually came in two versions, but I thought the orange was really sexy. There's also like a, like a military camo green. The orange also has a really practical purpose that it makes it really easy to see if it somehow slips off your wrist. I have the factory um, wrist strap on mine that I was able to kind of wear on my neck as I took it out shooting. And a little bit about the tech in the Nikonos V. It exposes 35 millimeter film through a focal plane shutter controlled by an electronic aperture. So you don't want any salt water getting inside the camera because if it messes up the aperture, you're kind of screwed. But it's not a complete waste at that point because if you're aware that something went wrong with the camera, it does have a fully manual non-electronic mode. And that's 1 90th of a second. It's the only manual shutter mode on the camera. But so long as you set your camera to 1 90th of a second, uh, the camera will be operating without its batteries fully manually. And the shutter speeds available on the Nikonos V are 1 30th of a second all the way to 1 1000th of a second. And there's also a bulb mode for long exposures if that's the kind of thing you're into. The camera's got a center weighted photodiode for electronic light metering, and the camera does feature some automation, some automatic shooting modes. It's got the traditional A mode on there. So you can put your camera in aperture mode, control the aperture yourself. So let's get to the difficult part of the camera. There had to be a gotcha. Um, there's one feature on the camera, or 
lack of features on the camera that's probably gonna make or break this thing to you, and that's its focusing system. The camera features only the zone focusing system, which I had to learn to use this camera. So all that's to say, there certainly isn't any autofocus. There isn't even a parallax or any sort of lining up the weird little circles so that you can actually achieve critical focus. You have to be able to roughly guess about how far your subject is away from you and then set your lens accordingly. And that obviously necessitates that there be some choices made when shooting this camera. You're gonna be a lot better off with the Nikonos V stopping this thing down to give you a big wide depth of field. Um, that way your guesstimations can be a little off and you still get good focus. It's also worth talking about that there's a tripod mount on the bottom of the camera and then also that every critical joint on the camera, anything that might be exposed to water, a point of failure has a silicone gasket in there which they would ask you to grease uh, before you use the camera to make sure that everything holds up. I hope I didn't scare you off at this point um, with the weird focusing system employed by the Nikonos V but shooting the Nikonos V is actually pretty darn intuitive. The camera in my mind functions less like a professional SLR system, although it does have interchangeable lenses, and much more like a premium quality point and shoot. And especially once you decide that you're going to shoot smaller apertures, uh, things are actually pretty darn easy to nail. Any photographer out there who's used an aperture priority camera mode or has used a fully manual camera will feel right at home with the Nikonos V, with the exception of that focusing system. And talking a little bit about how simple this darn camera is to use, I guess it actually has to be that way because the camera has to be operational underwater. You can see all the buttons and dials on the camera. We already talked about how chunky they were, but you can see that even the lettering and the numbering on the camera, everything is really big, which makes it to where it's a little easier to see when you are underwater. The only thing that I really had any trouble seeing when the camera was underwater was the frame counter. There's another thing to note when shooting the camera, talking a little bit about that focusing scale, they actually give you the underwater estimates on the lenses. So you can see the markings on the lens. The camera gives you this little interesting range and you want to keep it between the two red dots. And you can see as you change the aperture, the gap that's made by those red dots, your focal plane, um, expands and contracts as you change the aperture. But the thing that you need to know about that, these are the underwater focal distances. And for those of you guys out there who are like me and didn't do all that well in physics, when you put your camera lens underwater, the focal length changes quite significantly. So when you're on land, you have to kind of subtract that magnification because this, so again, this is the underwater focal plane, not the on land focal plane. So you just need to be aware of, there's like a one third increase in your focal length. That can goof you up, especially if you're shooting at wide out. The shutter on the camera is nearly silent. And in fact, when I was testing the camera out to make sure everything worked properly, I had to put the camera right up next to my ear to be, even be able to hear it. So the Nikonos V, it was made really for one purpose. It was made to function and work properly in really difficult situations. And I have to say that I, I, I didn't put it in that difficult of a situation. We just swam with some sharks, but the camera worked flawlessly. If you're somebody like me and you do actually enjoy some adventure, you know, I've got some hiking trips planned, love going out and camping in the snow, um, you're gonna be doing some snorkeling, going on vacations, those types of things. It definitely pays if you wanna continue to be able to shoot film in those challenging situations. And frankly, there is no better camera than the Nikonos V. Um, it's gonna give you the functionality and the capabilities to be able to get excellent images, which you've seen in this video, for a camera that can be had for not a ton of money. But even more broadly than that, you can see by the size of the camera, it's pretty great as an everyday camera as well. You know, I routinely carry around a Laka M6, which for all intents and purpose, weighs about the same as this thing. And with the Laka M6, there's this, this constant awareness when I'm using it, that I'm carrying this thing that is very expensive. I need to be aware, my briefcase, wherever this thing is, like I need to make sure that the Laka M6 is always near me and it's not gonna get stolen. Um, with the Nikonos V, you lose some of that. Not only is the camera not as valuable, so you don't have to worry about theft, but the camera is also really durable, so you don't have to kind of baby it or protect it. The camera's gonna be fine. If you knock it into a wall, if you drop it off the table, like the camera is ultimately going to be fine. I love my Laka M6, but there's definitely a place in my bag for the Nikonos V. It's a great camera. Prices on the Nikonos V these days are not all that bad. I bought mine in really good condition. It came with the box. The lens even came in a box. The camera came in its original box with its original hand strap and even the original tube of silicon grease. They can be had for much cheaper than the $400 or so that I paid for mine. You could probably pay quite a bit less and get one that's a little more used condition. And for about the $200, $250 that you could get a really used version of this camera, I think it's absolutely worth it. But talking a little bit about the legacy of the Nikonos V, almost every important underwater shot and even a bunch of those adventure shots that you saw from National Geographic but from the 1960s all the way to 2000 were taken on a camera something like this, a Nikonos camera. Because of the durability, because of the rugged reliability, these cameras were trusted by photographers the world over. These cameras were made to be the perfect all-weather rugged camera and they do a great job at that. For a little bit of money, these cameras can deliver exceptional image quality no matter the situation you take them into. And if after watching this 
video, you're not interested in a Nakanos V because it's big and chunky or whatever, um, and you want something a little more sexy, um, check out this video about the Contax G1. It's a more fragile camera, but darn, that thing looks good. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.